Hello, random ladies and gents, and welcome to Random Reviews, where I review toys, movies, games, whatever I feel like. I don't know. Why not Omega Reviews like last time? Because apparently there's a whole channel called Omega Reviews and I don't want to get sued. That said, let's talk about Pokemon. Who doesn't love Pokemon? I certainly do. I wouldn't be the man-child bio student I am now if it weren't for Pokemon. One of my favorites being Tauros, believe it or not. Ash's Tauros from the anime made me fall in love with this Pokemon, just because of how ridiculously tough they were. And truth be told, it's no different in the games, being one of the best normal types out there. So when Wicked Cool Toys finally released their Tauros figure, it was only natural to get one for myself. Although, it was a hard choice between the other figures released alongside it, like Incineroar and Gengar, and I was on a strict budget. But ultimately, I made my choice and stuck with Tauros. With that rambling aside, today we're taking a look at the Wicked Cool Toys Battle Feature Tauros figure. Yeesh, try to say that five times fast. Unboxing, Unboxing powers! powers! Activate! Activate! <laughs> right off the bat, I'll say the figure looks gorgeous. It's incredibly screen and game accurate in its appearance, as if it were ripped right out of the anime and the games of the recent generations. I say recent because the early sprites were, uh... Special. Anywho, continuing on, the sculpting on this figure is amazing for a Pokemon toy. Or at least one that isn't specifically made for collectors, to the point where like I said earlier, it feels like it was pulled right off our screens. The body has a solid bulky appearance, yet a surprisingly light build giving Taurus a rightfully beefy appearance, pun intended, while being light enough to lift and play around with, so you don't feel like you're holding a brick. The extra sculpting on the mane is wonderfully simple, yet add a nice touch of detail that gives the figure more character. The legs are wonderfully sculpted, setting in a charging bull type of pose, adding to the robust, powerful appearance of the figure. Although, if you want to change this pose, eh, we'll get to that later. The sculpting of the hooves are pretty interesting since the front and back sets of hooves are made of different plastics. With the front being solid plastic, while the hind hooves being so stressful. <laughs> Sorry, I have an intense love for squish. The tail is pretty stiff. Or should I say tails since it's three tails that are conjoined at the base, each one ending with a blue tuft. Sculpting at the blue ends of the tail are fine. Although, I'd warn that based on the quality of your figure, they might be a little pointy at the tips. <laughs> tips. The sculpting of the head is awesome! The horns are the highlight of the head, which are wonderfully curved with a solid feel, yet with a rubbery texture so no one will stab their eye out when playing with them. There's also the knobby dots that go down the middle of the head, which are collectively a wonderful little detail. The very fact that they didn't just paint them on, but instead sculpted them on there, shows a little more effort into the figure, so they get bonus points for that. The eyes are the icing on this delicious cake of a face, maintaining an accuracy to Tauros' eyes that tie in with the intimidation factor of Tauros altogether, which is wonderful. The painting on this figure is pretty good. I'll bet there isn't too much of it. Much of it is on the face, with the gray areas on the horns and the knobs. There's also some painting in the mouth with a nice fitting yet undistracting shade of pink, which is a nice detail since some companies won't go out of their way to paint less significant areas like the inside of mouths. Overall, it seems that the figure's colors come from the plastic itself rather than being painted on. But this in turn, along with the quality of the plastic, makes it durable and sturdy, allowing for some rough play. Which should be expected of a children's toy. Especially a toy of this beefy boy. I am just on a roll with these bull puns. While the painting and sculpting on this figure are practically perfecto, the posability on the other hand is... <coughs> much to be desired. The posability around the head is limited, only able to move side to side even though it feels like it should be swivelable. Same goes for the legs in which... <coughs> you can only go forward, but you can't move back. <coughs> but there's a reason for that. The battle feature. The battle feature is pretty simple. Just push back on those back legs, which is where the hind hooves squishiness comes into play, along for a smoother squat. Using the tail as a trigger, it launches forward and... Ah! Size comparison time! Here's Wicked Cool Toys Lapras, Safari Limited Giga, Combiner Wars Legend Shockwave, and Bandai Finger Puppet Tauros. Overall, this figure is pretty cool. I highly recommend it for collectors and kids. 
But more so for kids for its features and lack of posability. It's made more as a high quality looking kids toy or even a desk toy rather than something to pose and collect dust on your shelf. The pricing of this figure at the moment is around $9 to $10, so they're pretty cheap for a good quality figure. And I recommend getting it for the price, if not the quality alone. Personally, I'm happy to have this figure in my collection. As a kid, I didn't have many Pokemon toys, but as a man-child with money, <laughs> I'm unstoppable. So go grab a toy of this beefy boy if you're interested. This has been a random review, and I wish you all a random day.